here you have your QKC wallet. Here you can see your address, you have your private key that you can show and save, you have your balance details on the right, the blue one is your primary shard, your other shards will be listed as well, and you have the option to transfer your primary, which we'll just demo later. Below you have the basic details to send core cash, you need an address to send to obviously, the amount to send, gas price, gas limit, data, this should be very familiar to all of you. When you hit generate transaction, you'll see the actual details in the transaction in the stub below. You can see the raw transaction details, including details like the nonce, and also the signed transaction hash. And you'll get to review the transaction in the confirmation section before you actually send the transaction. Please note that confirmation time is generally around 90 seconds or so. Here you can see the transaction details, we can look at which block it's on, we can look at the from and to addresses and, and browse around. So here we're going to look at the to address which is on shard 7. You can see the addresses that are going in. This is the from address, this is the address we sent from and you can see the other transactions that this address has made. Now you see the balance has not reflected the total yet. And actually, here we go. The transaction has been done. You can see that the balance is now 21, when previously it was 22 on the primary shard. And now we're going to transfer the balance from the primary to the secondary, or sorry, the secondary to the primary. So we're going to send that transaction in, so hopefully we will soon see that the secondary shard will have no balance and your primary shard will have all of your QKC balance. And there we go, now we see that your balance is now reflected as zero on the secondary shard. And I think momentarily we'll have confirmation of the new balance on your primary. There you go, you see now it's 22 because we consolidated your QCKC from your other shard into your primary shard. Here is our smart contract page for deploying smart contracts on QuarkChain. We support Ethereum smart contracts, so you can use your Ethereum tools to compile the smart contracts. As a caveat, you have to only send in shard transactions with the smart contract and you can only deploy smart contracts onto the same shard as you. So here's an example of a greeter contract that lets you set and read a greeting. And so we use Remix to generate the bytecode for this. So we'll copy that bytecode into the deployment bytecodes category, set a very high gas limit so we can make sure it gets deployed, and then we deploy it. Um, here we have a preview of it before it's fully launched. Um, confirmation time is only 15 seconds because it's an in shard transaction. And so we've sent that transaction to deploy the smart contract and you can see that the receipt status is success. And you can see the contract ID right there and we're highlighting it. Um, so that's something you probably want to save. And then you can interact with your smart contract by using that previously mentioned ID by pasting it into the contract address field. And then if you put in the ABI, that gives you the definition um, or a byte interface to um, interact with the smart contract. And that way you can interact with the various functions. So for example, our smart contract had get block number as a function. We can call that um, and we read that and you can see this was on block 1144. And now let's say we wanna get the greeting now we haven't set a greeting yet, so in this case when we read, we expect an empty result, and so it's an empty string. That's expected. So now we want to set a greeting, and so we set a greeting, we say hello or hi. We write that into the smart contract, and that itself is a transaction, so we have to submit that transaction. And so we'll see that we've sent that transaction. 
and you can see that it, the block is still pending processing and it's successful now. So we've written the greeting into the contract and the state is now saved. So now we can try to retrieve the greeting. So now we retrieve the greeting and you can see that hi has been saved. Here you can see our explorer. In the explorer, you can look at the root block, the shard blocks, and also the addresses of transaction in a block. So the first number is always the root block. Here, you can actually browse the root block depending on the height. And then below, you can see the minor blocks that are included in this root block. When you click on a minor block, this will be a shard block, basically. You can see the shard it's on. It starts with a zero index. And you can see that this block on the shard has 500 transactions. If you click on a transaction, you can see the transaction status. You can see the from and to addresses and the amount of QKC this transaction entailed. And within an address, you can see a, a transactions that were either going in or out of this address. And so here you can see an address that has a lot of transactions going out of this address. Now we go back to the minor block or the shard block. And you can see that all 500 transactions are listed here and indexed for you to browse. And this is our explorer. Here's our network page. This shows the number of shards we're operating with, as well as the number of clusters, the number of nodes combined across the clusters. Topology shows the network topology of all these clusters and how they're connected to each other, and also color-coded by the geographical placement, whether it's in the US, Europe, or Asia. Next, we show you the world map, which shows you the number of clusters distributed geographically across the world in different data centers. And below, you can see the details of each cluster. In the details, you can see who the peers are for a cluster. And you can also see where they are placed. This should give you a general idea of how our overall network is doing. In the stats page, you can see more details about a single cluster. You can see what is the root chain height, the transaction per second, which is zero right now because nothing is confirming transactions right now. And you can see the details of each block on the shards. So we have 256 shards, so there are going to be 256 entries here, each of them representing their own shards, and each has a different block height. So here we're going to show you a live demo of our load test on our 50 cluster network. This is a video that's sped up at 2x speed. Um, and here we go. So you'll see that we just started it and we've loaded up pending transactions and the TPS is starting to go up across our cluster. Um, on the top right is where you can actually change which cluster you're connected to, to and you'll see that there's some variance in TPS because obviously the load generator doesn't exactly split load 100% evenly. And then you'll see that the graph that's plotting the TPS is actually a smooth graph. So what that means is that it takes the last three minutes of data points and averages them out to create a smoother graph experience rather than inherently show all the volatility in TPS. The TPS under the green box though is the real-time TPS for this cluster. So here we're seeing a spike up. Now we're up to 5,000, 6,000, You can see you'll see that it dipped a little bit because it went up to seven or 
8,000 and then it dropped back a little bit to 6,000 but then as the graph smooths out it'll change. See, as the TPS goes back up, the graph gets smoothed out again. So now we're hitting about 9,000 in real-time TPS. Getting close to 11,000 transactions a second now. You can see during this entire time, we can also still browse the history of transactions using the Explorer. Now we're close to 13,000 in transaction a second. And now 14,000 TPS. This should be close to our peak now. So it looks like we've peaked out at around almost 15,000 transactions a second. I think things will start winding down. You'll see below there's a pending, pending transactions per shard and that's actually decreasing. Some shards already have no pending transactions. So naturally the transactions per second is going to drop as a load generator stops sending transactions over. So the TPS is starting to wind down. So there you have it. This is a 12,000 transactions added per shard load test on a 50 cluster network with 10% cross shard transactions.